In former clips, we were concentrating on measuring or estimating the um, changes in function value, but we also may estimate the derivative in a way that is comparable. So look at the graph of a function f and look at a f a and suppose that the function is differentiable in a so that the slope f prime a is well defined. Now take a step delta x. Then we see that we go in function value we go from f a to f a plus delta x. Yeah, so this gives the absolute change in function value delta x. Yes, now define a function epsilon. We define a function on R, which is the function epsilon as follows. Look at delta x as the running variable and uh, if delta x is unequal to zero, then we may divide delta x, the actual change of y, by the change in variable x. And subtract the derivative in a. So this is what we do if delta x is unequal to zero, and we define it to be zero if delta x happens to be exactly zero. So this function is well defined, and uh, you may observe that this, this is a cont continuous function. Well, how come? Well, for delta x unequal to zero, it's continuous, it's not hard to show. So what we are left with is showing the limit of delta x going to zero of epsilon delta x. Well, this is no more than the same as taking the limit for delta x to zero of delta y divided by delta x minus f prime y, f prime a. Now f prime a in the story is a constant, so we can take it out of the limit. So we get a limit for delta x to zero of delta y divided by delta x. Yeah, so this is a separate limit now and we subtract the value of the derivative of f in a, f prime a. But notice that the limit of delta x going to zero of delta x divided by delta x, delta y divided by delta x equals the derivative. This is just an alternative way to express the derivative. So we get a derivative in a minus a derivative in a equals zero. But epsilon zero was defined as zero. So, we conclude that this function, this artificial function, epsilon delta x, goes to zero if delta x goes to zero. So it behaves continuously for delta x close to zero. Also, if we multiply epsilon delta x times delta x, which means that on both equations we may just multiply through with delta x, then we get delta x times delta y divided by delta x minus f prime y. If only delta x is unequal to zero. And if delta x equals zero, then of course epsilon delta x times delta x equals zero. This should come as no surprise. So if delta x is unequal to zero, then we see that epsilon delta x times delta x equals the absolute change in function value, delta y, minus the linear estimate of the change, which is delta x times f prime a. Yeah, so from this we learn that the actual change delta y equals the approximate change along the tangent line, delta x times f prime a, plus a term which depends on the function epsilon, so epsilon delta x times delta x. Now just look in the picture now. So we move from a 
to a plus delta x and if we measure the change along the yellow line we get delta x times the slope of the yellow line which is f prime a and the remainder is uh, uh, of the absolute change of delta y is due to a change in function epsilon delta x times delta x.